Uh, hello and welcome, dear friends. In this video, I want to uh, show you a small thing, uh, which is a step number two when we use a graph API with uh, Power Automate. And the step number two here is uh, authorization. So on this slide, you can see the three main steps that you need to consider when working with Graph API and Microsoft Flow or Power Automate. The first uh, par part is authenticate. And you can see one of my previous videos, I, I already explained how authentication works. In this video, I will concentrate mainly on Graph API um, authorization. And on the third video, we'll do a query. But uh, let's focus now on the authorization part. What I want to start with, when we use Graph API in MS Flow, it's faster, it's more efficient, but it is, it is a little bit more complex also. So to do that, we have to create an app in Azure Active Directory and to give specific permissions to Graph API for this app. And the type of permissions, when we work with permissions, we have two basic types. One is application permissions and one is delegated permissions. The main difference is that application permissions, they work uh, without sign-in user. And uh, the other permissions, delegated user must be signed in. So basically, in order to use delegated permissions, you have to have a user and you have to have an app working together. This is a security thing that Microsoft is, is using. And I'll get to that in a second. Uh, let's have a look at a very simple use case. So let's imagine I want to build Microsoft Flow or Power Automate uh, Flow. And in this flow, I'm going to create and update teams. And for each of the teams that they create, I will use an update planner within this team. So let's get to it. I'm not going to go through the whole flow. For now, I will just show the authorization part. Um, let's have a look. So here is a copy of this flow here. And what I'm doing, uh, this is the flow part. And also in order for me to uh, use Graph API, I would need to register an app in Azure Active Directory, as I mentioned. The apps are already registered. So if I go to Azure Active Directory and click, click on App Registrations, I see a couple of applications here. So I have two of them, MS Planner and MS Teams. This app, MS Teams, is used to create Teams and update Teams, and MS Planner is used to, to create and update Planner, respectively. So let's have a look at MS Teams. Uh, when I open the app, I can see the tenant ID, application ID, etc. And when I look here, view API permissions. This is what's authorization. So basically, in this API permissions, I see two permissions currently assigned to this app. One is a directory read write all, and one is group read write all. So as you know, behind Teams and Microsoft uh, Office 365, there are groups, groups objects. So uh, we would need this permission, group read write all and uh, directory read write all. And this is application permission. It means that this application can uh, basically work on its own, it does not need a specific user. And this could be a serious security threat. Let's say if you give this type of permissions to a specific developer and he knows the secret, the application ID and the tenant ID, he can potentially damage your um, tenant because this application has quite pow powerful um, powerful permissions. If you see here, admin consent required, it means um, mainly it's related to enterprise environments. So let's say I'm not a global admin and I want to request this permissions. Um, then I just click here, add a permission, and then the admin would go 
here and uh, click on grant admin consent f for this uh, specific application. So in order to add permissions, you would just go here, click on add permission and select specific permissions, which are available at Microsoft documentation. You click on Microsoft graph and then you specify what type of permissions. For MS Planner, you would use delegated permissions. Um, uh, this is uh, one thing to remember. And for, um, let's say, Microsoft Teams, if you want to work with those, you would use application permissions. So uh, this is simple. Just click on specific permission, select permission, and click add permission. Um, and if I look at the second app that I have here, so I go back here and I click on view API permissions. This app is used mainly to create planner objects and to update planner objects. So to do some tasks, to, to do some updates, things like that. And this app is a little bit different and it has different permissions. So it also has directory read, write all. It has group read, write all and tasks read write so for each of the tasks which is created in planner you can um you know you would need this type of permissions for, for, for so the app can do it and this type is delegated so it means that the user must be logged in to um, use this uh, app and to to modify specific objects so it's like a two-way authentication one way is that app has proper permissions and second way is that user has proper permissions and you see for example this one this permission admin consent is not required so you can you know if you develop a personal app or something like this uh, and you do not have a global admin permission in your tenant then you would select this one and it, it gives you uh, some options to work with but uh, these permissions are very high, high privileged ones, so um, you would need global admin to give those. So when the permissions are assigned uh, to, to these apps, it means that uh, Graph API authorization is done, and then your apps would be able to do, you know, to, to do specific object manipulations in Office 365. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope it's been helpful to you. Uh, have a wonderful day and uh, stay healthy. Bye-bye.